Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another episode of the Azeroth Arsenal. It's been a while since I've done one of these, and in this one, I wanted to do another bundle episode, sort of like how I did the Rent Blackhand edition in episode 6. In particular, I want to mainly focus on old epic weapon drops back in vanilla. Purples did really drop from dungeons and of course out in the world, and they were very rare and highly sought after since they were still a big deal back then. Over the years, they've lost their value, but when everyone was just starting raiding, seeing a purple item was like, whoa, shit just got real. Pardon my French. So, seeing them in dungeons was doubly amazing since most of the drops were blue items. First up, we have Tibu's Blazing Longsword. This was actually a world drop. Well, maybe not a world drop, but it dropped from trash mobs in high level dungeons and raids, and originally it was the holy grail item in the game. It was in the original box art, and was therefore the first epic item that most people saw. Just looking at this picture is an experience itself. Zoomable minimap makes navigation simple. Holy crap! What a story, Mark! Create your own unique hero from one of 8 player races and 9 different player classes. Then, customize your character with hundreds of different hair, skin, and outfitting combinations. Enter the world with one-click access to Blizzard's dedicated World of Warcraft game network. I'm pretty sure it was more than one click. Here, let's test it. See? At least two clicks, and that's counting that you've created a character already. Damn false advertising. Whether you're a novice or a veteran, a world of bold adventure and mighty deeds awaits. Even if you only have a few minutes to play, Blizzard's superior quest system ensures an adventure is always waiting. The game's user interface is so intuitive that you may never need to read the manual. Well, for some people at least, but let's go past that. Hey, if you get to hurl your fiery balls at people, then sign me up. The actual sword in-game is a little different though, slightly less DPS, and you get an actual number for the fiery ball proc, 150 damage. So, this was probably one of the rarest items in the game. I think I saw one in my whole time playing back then, and it was on a hunter, funny enough. It looks like a lightsaber, so it has a nice aesthetic to it, and it's even a light source. If you bring it to a dark area, you'll see that it lights up the area a bit, which is a cool subtle little detail, I think. The rarity of this item has diminished ever since the Warlords of Draenor expansion, because you could get it from one of the buildings there. But still, one of the Holy Grails in the classic game definitely has a spot in the Azeroth arsenal. The next one I wanted to mention is Solthrae's The Lasher. This one I always thought was cool because it wasn't a drop, but rather it's a combination of two other drops. It's tied to the Zulfurak instance all the way in the Tanner's Zone, which is a level 45-ish dungeon. In here, you can get two blue one-hander swords. Sang Thrace the Deflector off of the Antusul boss, who is the Basilisk Keeper, and Jeng Thrace the Protector from the Chief Ukor's Sandscalp boss. Alone, these are pretty ordinary one-handers, but if you get both on one character and combine them, you form the epic Sol Thrace sword. The model looked quite nice at the time, especially for its level. It had an interesting proc which lowered the strength of your enemy and dealt some shadow damage, both instantly and over time. Back in vanilla, we had a bunch of items with weird procs like this. Life drains, stat reductions, kind of interesting. The speed was 2.6, which was pretty fast, which made it pretty bad actually since you wanted slow weapons back then, but the real value was just in that novelty of having the purple and the cool way of obtaining it. It is still obtainable today, so if you want to unearth the nifty relic of the past and get yourself a transmog, 
head on over to Zulfarak. And next we have the Ironfall. This was the legendary hammer forged by the master smith, Frank Lorne Forgerite. Hey, if you have Forge in your name, you know that you're a pretty good blacksmith. You may remember him from Vanilla. He was a secret ghost NPC that was outside of the Blackrock Depths instance, the one who gave you the quest for the key to the place. He was the creator of Ironfall, and it was passed down to the great-great-grandfather of Reginald Windsor. Now, if this name sounds familiar to you, this is the guy who was instrumental in the Anixia attunement for the Alliance way back in the day. But he was captured in the Blackrock Depths, and he had to rescue him, take him to Stormwind, where he exposed Katrana Prestor as Anixia, where he was then turned into Reginald when scorched. So, when he was captured, the leader of the Dark Iron Dwarves, who is Emperor Therissen, took Iron Foe to wield for himself, and adventurers could loot it from his corpse if they were lucky. And when I say lucky, I mean very lucky because this thing was rare. It was around a 2% drop rate, and considering that Therissen was the last boss of an excruciatingly long dungeon, seeing someone with this weapon was like seeing a unicorn back then. And unlike Sulthrae's, it was actually good. Really good, in fact, because of its proc, which gave not just one, but two extra attacks on your next swing. Typically, rogues and fury warriors were the lucky recipients. Hey, hunters can't use maces, so luckily, this is safe from their wrath. And it's still obtainable today, although the proc has been nerfed to just one extra attack. Dragon's Call was a unique sword found in the Great Sunken Temple Dungeon. Again, epic quality, but what made this one special was that it had a chance on hit to summon a Dragon Whelp to assist you. Back then, the only classes that you saw had pets were the Hunter and Warlock, and Shamans if you want to count totems, and these pet summoning items were much less commonplace in general as they are now. So, it was very handy and you could summon up to three whelps at a time if you were lucky enough. And it wasn't unique, so if you were crazy enough to farm two of them, you could technically get an army of six whelps to serve as your personal escort and wreck anyone in your way. It dropped from the Shade of Aranicus boss specifically, who was the final boss of the Sunken Temple. Like I said in a recent video, it was much more annoying to get than it is today because back then, there were more floors to this dungeon, and scattered throughout the area, you had these trolls who were channeling a protection spell on Aranicus, and you had to track them down and take them out along with the prophet boss before you could attack them. So, similar to Therissen, this weapon was rare not just due to the 2-ish percent drop rate, but by how unfriendly it was to farm it since the dungeon took so long. The look is quite nice in my opinion. Sort of as the same vein as Lincoln's sword, it looks epic, but still realistic and not super over the top, which fits some people's transmogs, I'm sure. And again, still obtainable. Now, I want to say that it was mainly rogues or warriors who were the lucky recipients of this one, but again, you gotta keep in mind that epics were epic back then, and combining that with the fact that no one knew what they were doing, it was a free-for-all, and if someone could equip it, they would roll on it pretty much. So, I'm sure there were a fair share of mages, warlocks, other casters, and everyone's favorite class running around with this back in the day. Hey, my old guildmaster said that Hunter should have equal priority on the legendary Thunder Fury sword, so I'm pretty sure this was fair game to them as well. Damn Hunters! You know a weapon is pretty substantial if it has an heirloom named after it. The Headmaster's Charge was one of the most sought after caster weapons before raiding. It dropped off of the Dark Master Gandling in the level 60 dungeon Skolomance. 
he was the last boss of this place. And what made this one special honestly was its look. It was a staff of course, adorned with bone spurs and a diablo horned skull at the top. At the time, there wasn't anything like it and it definitely turned heads. It also had a special on use effect that increased the intellect of you and any nearby party members which made you pretty popular. Like I said earlier, Vanilla had all sorts of cool procs and unuse effects, one of the many RPG elements that's diminished over the years. The original staff is no longer in the game unfortunately due to the Skolomance revamp in Pandaria, so the only wielders are the select few who farmed it out before then. You can still get the transmog via the re-release Headmaster's Will, or like I mentioned, the Heirloom Staff. But that's about it for this one. There's another set of cool classic items for you. Hopefully, you learned about some stuff you didn't know about. Or heck, maybe it'll be useful for those of you who are going to play the classic servers. Anyways, I hope you found the video interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Azeroth Arsenal. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.